My name is Brent with TimerCo.com and you're watching a tutorial video on wiring and programming our most popular timer, the Frontier TM619. You want to start by removing the plastic strip that, from the battery. You do not have to remove the battery cover and remove, to remove the plastic strip. If your timer does not have a battery backup, it is not an authentic Frontier 619, you have a generic knockoff. You want to bring a hot wire from your power source into terminal number one. You want to bring a ground or neutral wire into terminal number two. You want to bring another hot wire from your power source into terminal number three. Terminal number four is normally closed contact. Most of our customers don't use terminal number four. Terminal number five is normally open contact. You want to connect a wire from terminal number five going to your application, maybe at a light, a fountain, or a gate and then you want to complete the cycle to a ground. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see the display. Once you have it wired, you can hit the manual button that's in the middle and you'll see the dash that's above auto right now. If you hit the manual button, if the dash is above on, that means it's going to supply power all the time to your application. In this example, it's a light. If you hit the manual button until the dash is above off, it's going to turn off the power all the time. And then if you have the dash above auto, it's going to supply power at the times in which you have it programmed. Off here on the right hand side, there's a reset button. You'll need, you'll need a pen or a paper clip to press it and you'll just press it down. And what that does is that resets the, all the times that you have in there and the clock as well. If you ever find yourself in trouble or if you're reprogramming it, we recommend that you reset it and start clean. To set the clock, you hold down the clock button. You'll see up at the top, once you hit the day button, you can cycle through. We're going to, for this example, we're going to set it for Tuesday. While holding down the clock button, we're going to hit the hour button until we get to 7 a.m. We're going to hit the minute button until we get to 7.10. So now your clock is set. In order to set the time that you wanted to turn on and off, you'll hit the timer button once and it'll take you to your first program time, which is going to be your one on. You hit the day button and you can see up at the top there's 15 different day ranges that you can select. There's Monday through Sunday, there's just Monday, just Tuesday, just Wednesday. You also have Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday, Monday through Saturday, Monday through Wednesday. For this example we're going to do just Tuesday. We're going to hit the hour button until you get to 7 a.m. And we're going to hit the minute button until we get to 7.12, which means the timer is going to supply power to your application at 7.12. We're going to hit the timer button one more time. It's going to take you to your first one off function. This is going to be the time that the timer is going to disconnect the power. We're going to hit the day button yet again until we cycle to just Tuesday. We're going to hit the hour until we get to 7 a.m. And we're going to hit the minutes until we get to 7.13. We'll hit the clock button one more time to display the clock. So now your timer is programmed to supply power at 712 and it's going to disconnect power at 713. We recommend that if you have times that you want it to function Monday through Friday and then different times that you want it to supply power on Saturday and Sunday, what we recommend is to do a one on, one off for Monday. For Tuesday, do a two on, two off for Tuesday and then program each day of the week separately. What we do not recommend is that you program your one on, one off for Monday through Friday and then have your two on, two off for Saturday and Sunday. These timers use a CR2032 button battery that can be found at most drugstores or hardware stores. This timer is programmed to supply power at 712. As you can see, when the clock hits 712, it's applied power to the application. In this example, it is a light. The benefit of having a button battery is that it'll, it'll save your program times that you have in there. It'll also save your clock. So if the power flickers or the power goes out completely, you don't have to reprogram your timer. Now this timer will not function just solely on the battery. It needs to be connected to a power source. And the batteries typically last two to three years. 
The TM619 is our most popular model, but we do carry other timers, including recycle timers, delay on make, delay on break, multifunction timers, three-phase line monitors, DIN rail mountable timers, and DIN rail itself, to name a few. This timer does not take into account daylight savings or holidays. You can visit our website, timerco.com or solderlessterms.com. Feel free to call us toll free at 888-874-6280. When the clock hit 713, the timer disconnected power to our application and the light went out. I hope this video was informative. You're now set to wire and program your Frontier TM619. Thank you for watching.